So, if you've been in Unity, you may have been looking around things related to the preservation of data during different game sessions. You may have come across a built-in solution made by Unity called Player Preferences, or Player Prefs for short. Player Prefs are units that store and access information between game sessions. Some common uses of these can be seen in the settings menu, where a toggle must stay the same until the player changes it, in high scores, where the value must be stored until the player beats the record, and in level selectors, where there needs to be a register on which levels the player has passed and which has he not passed. If you're interested in a practical use of player prefs, you can check out my video that I did about how to make a high score in Unity. Player prefs are very straightforward and work similar to dictionaries in languages like Python, because it uses a system of key value pairs, which is, as the name suggests, a value that can be accessed with a key. The value is what you want to save. This is limited to either a string, an integer, or a float. The key is the string that addresses the data that you're saving, so when you're looking to get a player pref value, you use the key to access said value. So to start using player prefs, we also need to learn about the static methods that come with it. These include delete all, delete key, get float, get int, get string, has key, save, set float, set int, set string. You can see the function of all the static methods in the screen, and I will link in the description below the page where you can find the Unity documentation for it. There you can see a more profound look at how to use all of these methods. So now let's jump straight into Unity and let's see how we can set up one of these player preferences. Okay, so let's start coding in a little blank script. So here I have a function called example. This is basically a users function that will never be called because this is only to show you the way that you can work around player preferences. Okay, so how do we start a player preference? So the first thing we want to know is to know which type of value we're storing. We can store either an int, a string, or a float. In this case, let's say I want to store a string. So I want to go ahead and put player preferences dot and we're gonna put set string. Okay, so now we're gonna be creating a new player pref or we're gonna be reassigning the value of an old one. Okay, so the first value this will take in is the key. This is the identifier of the whole player pref as I told you beforehand. Let's say we want the key value to be, let's say Pokemon and let's say we want the value of Pokemon to be Pikachu. Okay, so now we have Pokemon that has the value of Pikachu. So let's say we want to call this. How do we call it? Well, we can just do player prefs dot get string, and then we just call the key called Pokemon. Now, if we run this code, we should get this line of code returning a value of Pikachu. Now, this value of Pikachu will not change even if you reset the script. So even if you reset your game, even if you restart it, even if you close it, you will always have this value stored because that's how player prefs work. So what happens if we go ahead and set string, the same string, the same Pokemon key value, but this time let's set it to Charmander. Okay, what happens here? Well, what happens is that Pokemon gets overwritten and now has the value of Charmander. So if I do this again, if I call get string again, we will return Charmander. Okay, this happens with int, this happens with floats. It happens with every single one of these. So that's the basic function of player prefs. Now, if we want to delete all the player prefs, we can just go ahead and type player prefs dot delete all. This will delete all the key value pairs in your game. The information will be forever lost, so you will never have to worry about it again. This is usually used for resets in games and all that kind of stuff. So the last thing I want to talk about player prefs is where the information gets stored. Now, depending on your device, this may be stored in different places. I have an image up right now where you can see where everything is. Also, there is to note that there's only a limit of one megabyte of information being stored in WebGL programs. So if you're exporting to WebGL, take a look at that. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like if you did and consider subscribing for more content like this. Anyways guys, have a nice one.